Vocabulary 14. Hi, I'm Sonia and you are watching the Best My Test TOEFL vocabulary video series. If you were to encounter the words migratory or nomadic or sedentary in a TOEFL test, would you know the meanings of those words? If not, you should watch this video. In the video, I will explain words that relate to human migration and settlement. I'll explain these words in greater detail just now, but briefly, migration refers to moving around from one place to another and settlement to staying in a specific place. Our first family of words, one, two, three of them, refers to living in a place. The first word is inhabit. It is a verb and it means to live in a place or an environment. Inhabitant is a noun that means someone who lives in a house, a place or an environment. Notice how we form the noun, we add the suffix ant, ant, and then the word becomes inhabitant. Our third word is inhabitable. Inhabitable is an adjective which means suitable to live in, a place that is suitable to live in. And inhabitable is formed by adding the suffix able to the verb inhabit. Here are some sample sentences that illustrate the use of these words. During the Neolithic and Bronze Ages, lake dwellers inhabited different regions of Lake Constance in Germany. They built pole houses in the shallow tidal waters of the shoreline, which provided more easily habitable spaces than the densely forested land. Here is another family of three words that you should know. Settle, settler and settlement. To settle means to start living in a new place, usually a place in which not many people have lived before. And settle is a verb. Settler, settler, is a noun. And a settler is someone who moves to a new place and who starts living there. A settlement is a noun. And a settlement is a group of houses or buildings. Usually we refer to a small town in which people have just settled as a settlement. Here are some sample sentences and once again I've used the example of the pole houses, the pole settlement on Lake Constance in Germany. Settlers settled at Unteraldingen because it was at the shortest crossing from the northern to the southern shores of Lake Constance. Settlements at the geographical crossing of trade routes benefited from trade with passers-by. Our third family of words is migrate, migrant, migration and migratory, the adjectival form of the verb migrate. So to migrate means to move from one country or place to another. A migrant is a person who moves from one country to another and migration is the movement to another country in order to settle there. In the sample sentences, I will use some of these words in context to illustrate their use. The world is witnessing desperation migration on a large scale. Hazardous migratory flows of refugees often end in tragedy. People often have no choice but to migrate because political upheaval and war destroy their homes and livelihoods. Another word that deals with moving from one place to another is nomad. But nomads don't settle in a place. A nomad is a member of a tribe that travels from place to place instead of settling in one place. And they do this because they have to find grass for their animals. They are usually herdsmen. And the adjectival form of nomad is nomadic. Here is a sample sentence. These collapsible tents called yurts have been the homes of nomadic tribes in Central Asia for 3,000 years. 
Our final word is the opposite of moving around. The word is sedentary and it comes from a Latin root that means to sit. And that is what sedentary means. It means characterized by much sitting. Many of us lead sedentary lives in the modern era. We sit in front of computers, we type all day, we lead inactive lives, sedentary lives. Here is a sample sentence. While the Bushman tribe may seem sedentary in this photograph, the life of an active hunter-gatherer is anything but sedentary. I hope you find the vocabulary that I've just taught you useful when you write the TOEFL test. For more information on TOEFL vocabulary or TOEFL practices, go to the www.bestmytest.com website. Goodbye.